organisms and new individuals to the population by the process of reproduction. And this can be done by either of the two methods, that is, asexual or sexual mode. Asexual reproduction is the preferred style of lower organisms and is performed by mitosis. And how do sexually reproducing organisms increase their population? That's the right answer. Sexual reproduction is aided by meiosis. We've seen the process of meiosis in detail in the previous videos. Let's summarize the entire process in this video. Let's begin with the preparatory phase, that is the interphase first. This cell goes through three phases, namely G1 phase, S phase and G2 phase in order to grow and prepare itself for the actual division. And can you tell me what happens to the genetic material during the interface? That's correct. The DNA is replicated to make an identical copy of each chromosome. On similar lines, other organelles of the cell also get duplicated in this complete phase. Among all the organelles, the duplication of one organelle is equally important as the replication of DNA. And which organelle are we talking about? Yes, it's the centrosome. And why is the duplication of centrosome so important? Because this organelle contains centrioles which form the spindle fibers needed for separating sister chromatids later. Now, this perfectly grown cell is all set to divide and entered the meiotic phase. According to the order, the cell will undergo karyokinesis and that will be followed by cytokinesis. Let's dive deeper into this world of meiosis. Meiosis is carried out in two rounds called meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Why is that so? That's correct. To obtain four haploid cells with half the number of chromosomes compared to the parent cell. Let's begin with meiosis 1 first. Meiosis 1 is divided into four stages. They are prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1 and telophase 1. We will list down the changes observed in the cell during these stages step by step. Let's begin with prophase 1. It's the longest phase of meiosis 1. The phase is further divided into five substages. They are leptotene, zygotene, pacotene, diplotene and diakinesis. Leptotene is the first substage. In this phase, the cell begins condensation of the chromatin making it short and compact. The next stage after leptotene is the zygotene substage. Here, the homologous chromosomes form a pair called the synapsis. The new structure that is formed after the union of two homologous chromosomes is called a tetrad or a bivalent. After forming bivalents, the cell enters the next substage called the pacotene. Here, the bivalents exchange gene segments between the non-sister chromatids of homologous chromosomes. And can you tell me what this process is called? That's the right answer. It's called crossing over. And the location where the exchange takes place is called chiasma. After successfully interchanging the genes with one another, the cell enters the next substage called the diplotene. In diplotene, the bivalents unbutton themselves, resulting in the separation of the two homologous chromosomes. But here, the tricky part is that the homologous chromosomes are still anchored at the chiasma. Finally, in the last substage called the diakinesis, the homologs get completely unhooked and regain their individual identity. The nuclear membrane and the nucleolus completely disappear by the end of prophase 1. Now let's move ahead with the next stage of meiosis 1, that is metaphase 1. The homolog pairs align on the equator of the cell with random orientation. This arrangement is called the metaphase plate and is a result of independent assortment. In the successive phase, that is the anaphase 1, the homolog pairs separate from each other and move towards the opposite poles. Finally, the cell undergoes the last phase, that is the telophase 1, along with the first cytokinesis. The two new cells obtained are now haploid in nature. The telophase 1, followed by cytokinesis, helps in the formation of a nuclear membrane surrounding the chromosomes and a nucleolus as well. 
The daughter cells are haploid, which are formed from the diploid parent cells. Chromosomes, however, are still seen attached to their sister chromatids. So, in order to separate the sister chromatids from each other, each haploid cell undergoes another round of division. But before moving ahead, the haploid cells enter a small resting phase called the interkinesis. It's a short phase with no activities involved. After going through this phase, the cell is all set to undergo the second round of meiotic division. The next round is called the meiosis II. It also includes four stages. In other words, meiosis II can be considered as the mitosis of haploid cells. The first phase is the prophase II. Here, the nuclear membrane and the nucleolus begin disappearing. The chromatid condenses to become short and compact and gains a typical chromosome structure. In metaphase II, the chromosomes align at the equator and the spindle fibers attach to the respective sister chromatids. In anaphase II, the chromatids separate from each other and move to opposite poles due to the contraction of spindle fibers. Finally, in telophase II, the chromosomes decondense. The nuclear membrane envelopes the chromosomes and the nucleolus also begins to reappear. The chromatids form the daughter chromosomes at both the poles. Last but not the least, cytokinesis helps divide the cell into two. Since two cells have simultaneously undergone meiosis II, we get four haploid cells at the end. The haploid cells are also called gametes and are genetically different from each other. And why is that so? Genetic difference mainly occurs due to recombination between the chromosomes, which takes place during meiosis I. And with this, we come to an end with the concept of meiosis. Now, let's have a look at the major differences between mitosis and meiosis in the next video.